you know, 12 years ago, 1992 at the time of the Rio Earth Summit, there was a lot of ideology. I don't want to be a partner with you because you have a different belief to me. Um, now things are much more pragmatic. At the Rio Earth Summit, I was invited onto the Greenpeace Rainbow Warrior uh, because it was docked there in, uh, in Rio. And I thought we were going to have a nice chat. But when they figured out who I was, <laughs> representing the World Bank, they threw me off the ship. Um, that was 1992. Well, last month, the Rainbow Warrior of Greenpeace was in Jakarta. We had helped encourage it to come in. The crew came to my house for lunch. Why? Do they love me? No. No, they certainly don't. They don't like the World Bank. But they realize that if you're going to get something achieved in today's world, you have to build partnerships. And you throw ideology out the window and you aim for results. What implication does this have for all of us? It has a lot of implications because it means you can think much more boldly about the kinds of partnerships. In the old days, you'd go and you'd talk to an agency or, or, a, you know, or a government department and they'd say, hey, you know, you're an NGO, we don't we don't have a, or we're the World Bank, we don't, no, it's changed now. And what people now do when they wake up on a Monday morning and go to work, they think about results and that's very encouraging. I was recently in, um, we have a, a program in Indonesia for widows. There are a lot of widows and they're, they're usually not old ladies. Um, many of them from conflict areas are very young ladies, very outspoken. And I was in uh, Aceh. Um, and we receive funding from the Japanese government. Uh, we channel the funding through an NGO and we involve both sides of the military conflict there. So I was thinking, sitting there, we were sitting in this very remote place in Aceh, uh, which is uh, northern Sumatra, which is actually a, in, in, in a war situation. There are freedom fighters there. So we had the Japanese ambassador. We had the head of uh, the local Bankrakia Indonesia person. We had two NGOs, one domestic, one Japanese. We had myself and we had military commanders from both sides. And we were talking to widows about microfinance. That illustrates how imaginative one can be now in forging partnerships. So you don't have to hang out just with you know, other NGOs or other Christian NGOs or certain government ministries. You can actually be much more imaginative. So too, don donor harmonization is being forced now in a way it's never been before. Last year there was a big meeting in Rome. Next year there'll be a big meeting in Paris. There's a lot of pressure to do things new. So for example, in Indonesia, we are a DFID, that's the British aid agency, has told me they want to close their office in Jakarta, they want to move in to the World Bank. Uh, not because they want to be under the World Bank, it would be a separate, but they want to show that actually you can, we're going to then try to get other donors to really demonstrate a common approach. And next month we're opening uh, a, a multi-donor, multi-NGO office in Makassar uh, for Eastern Indonesia uh, in, in Sulawesi. So uh, there's, lots of, um, there's lots of opportunities. It has implications uh, also at the, the national level. There's a, a, real, a real political momentum now for a government, governments in the developing world, to have poverty plans that we all then support. Uh, to the extent we're successful at getting micro-enterprise development into those plans, and I would really encourage all of you to really engage in the, the preparation of those poverty reduction strategies, then we're going to see a lot more convergence and coherence, a lot more funding directly to those who are expert, such as yourself.